My name is uh, Deepak Mishra and I would like to say you Namaste. Uh, my question is, uh, actually uh, I am a Hindu and I have married a Muslim girl in India and inshallah she will be here in uh, Saudi Arabia in coming next month. You know what, when I told her that I will be going to visit uh, Dr. Zakir Nayak's speech, so she told, please don't go to him. Uh, he says bad about Shias and she is a Shia actually. So, uh, she, she told, no, don't, don't, don't go to him and uh, her mother-in-law also told, no, please, you don't go. If you go to him, he will tell you bad about Shia and you will leave me. So, uh, that is the first doubt which I am having in my mind. And the second thing is, uh, I, have a, I have a generic question in the sense that if we say that everything is God and uh, everything belongs to God in Hindu and Muslim religion, so why God wants everybody of us to worship Him. Why is He created us uh, in any forms of religion uh, when you talk about the creation? Why is He created us? Why He wants us to worship? Why He wants us to take so much of pains to worship Him? And why He doesn't ask animal or anybody else to worship Him? Why only human beings? Thanks. Brother well, asked two questions. Before he asked the question, he told me Namaste. Brother, do you know the meaning of Namaste? Uh, no. <laughs> People say hi. And what is the meaning of hi? Even I say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The meaning is may peace, blessings, and mercy of Allah be on you. You told me namaste. I have to reply. Correct? And if I don't reply, you'll tell me what kind of a person is he. Correct? I'm asking you what is the meaning of namaste. You now don't see, uh, for me, Namaste is like I am saying hi to you. I am saying Assalamu Alaikum to you. But yeah, for I, you, please forgive me. If I abuse you and I tell my abuse means you are a good person, will you believe in that? If, if see, I know the if, word, if I tell Ullu, you know Ullu. <laughs> Ullu in Urdu, Hindi means owl. In English, owl means a wise person. But Ullu in Hindi means what? Ullu means bewakuf. Yeah, bewakuf. So the, so the English people will think I'm praising you, calling you a wise person. But you know I'm calling you a fool. Now I know the meaning of Namaste. That's the reason I didn't reply yet. You don't know the meaning. You have told me Namaste. I know the meaning, therefore I didn't reply. The meaning of Namaste is, it comes from the Sanskrit word idam namame. Meaning I bow down to you. Do you want to bow down to me? Absolutely. You can bow down to the person who is having so much of knowledge. That's right. According to you, you can bow down to a person of knowledge, but according to the Quran and according to Islam and most of the religions, you bow down to no one but Almighty God. You know, there are many Hindus, after I give a talk, they come and touch my feet. You know what they say? Humne pehle baar Bhagawan ka avtar khud dekha se. It's the first time in my life I have met God Himself personally. Hindu telling me. So I didn't see, brother. I know you respect me, you love me, I appreciate that. But bowing to anyone besides God is shirk. And even in Hinduism, you should bow down to no one but Almighty God. So I'm correcting him. He's doing out of respect, out of love. But love and respect should not go overboard. If it goes overboard, it's called as shirk. Associating partner with God. There are many Hindus who come after me and they praise me so much. They put me next to God, which I said, I am not God. You can only bow down to Almighty God. What I speak and the knowledge is a gift from God. This is a gift from God. So when you see me, you should say, MashaAllah. MashaAllah means as Allah willed. Means whatever I'm saying is because of the will of Almighty God. Otherwise, I was a stammerer. So that's the reason Namaste is against Islam and against actually even the Hindu scriptures. Though some of the scholars say that idam namamet can mean that I appreciate you, but the right meaning is I bow down to you. In Islam, assalamu alaikum, may peace be on you. You can say that anytime, anywhere. In English, we say good morning. It may be raining, cats and dogs, they to say good morning. The person may have had a fight with his wife, someone says good morning, he has to wish back good morning. He is cursing in his heart that such a morning should never come. <laughs> Yet he has to reply by good morning, good evening, good night. 
So best in Islam is Assalamu alaikum may peace be on and I wish you because the Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 86 that if anyone greets you courteously wish back more courteously that if anyone greets you courteously wish back more courteously or at least the same so I am wishing you back Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh may Allah's peace and mercy be on you brother now coming back to your question so the first question you asked that your fiancé fiancé or your wife my wife wife oh you already married her fine your wife told you not to come for my lecture because I'm against Shia and yet you disobeyed her you know you love me so much I appreciate that but but you know why the word Shia doesn't exist in the Quran See, the Shia Sunni is not mentioned in the Quran. The Quran says in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse number 103, Hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. We Muslims should hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. And Almighty God says in the Quran in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 159, that, O Prophet, anyone who makes sex in the religion of Islam, you have nothing to do with him. Allah will look after his affairs on the day of judgment. So making sex in the religion of Islam is prohibited. So anyone who divides the religion of Islam into sex, he is going away from Quran and Sunnah. So tell your wife that Dr. Zakir Naik said, there is nothing like Shia Sunni. Quran says, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. What we have to do is we have to follow the Quran and the sayings, the authentic sayings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the only label you can give is Muslim. So I don't call myself Shia Sunni, I call myself Muslim. So you say today to your wife, I met Dr. Zakir Naik who calls himself a Muslim. And I'm neither against Sunni nor neither against Shia. I tell all the Muslims, whatever name they call themselves, come back to Allah and His Rasul. Now, when I give answer, some of the Muslims who may be practicing things against the Quran and Sunnah may feel offended. So you ask your wife, are you following something against the Quran Sunnah? If you are not, then why are you afraid of Dr. Zakir Naik? If you are, yes. You have to change and come back to Quran Sunnah. Don't follow what Zakir says. Zakir is zero in Islam. Atiullah, Atiur Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. So tell your wife, if she is following anything against the Quran and Sahih Hadith, then she has to rectify herself. She should call herself a Muslim because the word she has nowhere mentioned in the Quran. But well, I do appreciate that you love your wife, but you love me also, mashallah. Therefore, I've come for my talk. Now, coming to your second question, that why has God created us? And why does God want us to worship Him? Why doesn't He ask the animals to worship Him? Now, regarding your question, why does God want us to worship? I've already given the answer earlier. I think you came late, I don't know. That we worship God, we praise Him. People ask me, why do you say Allah Akbar? Why you have to pray to God? I said, see, in Islam, whether we pray to God or not, it makes no difference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I say Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest, He's already the greatest. By me saying Allah Akbar, He won't become greater. Why do we say? You know why do we say? Because when I praise anyone, whenever I call anyone great, it's a human tendency, I try and follow His commandments. So the reason we praise Allah is not so that He becomes greater. When we praise Allah, the moment we praise Him, whatever commandments He gives in the Quran, we follow it. So first we have to identify who is our Almighty God. And then what He says, we have to follow. That is the reason Muslim means a person who submits his will to Almighty God. Quran mentions in Surah Dariyat, chapter 51, verse 56, that we have created the jinn and the men not but to worship me. Almighty God has created us to worship Him. And the reason He wants us to worship Him because He has given us the criteria. This is the instruction manual for the human being. The good and bad for the human being. Now when we worship Him, when we praise Him, but naturally we have to follow His commandments. And when we follow the commandments of Almighty God, it is beneficial for us. Like for example, when you go to a doctor and the doctor gives you a prescription, do you follow his prescription or not? Yes. Yes. Why? Because you're sick. He's a doctor. Similarly, Almighty God has prescribed us in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith what is good and bad for the human beings. When we praise Him, when we worship Him, 
but naturally we follow his commandments. If you don't believe the person is a doctor and if you give you a prescription, will you follow it? No. So when you appreciate the doctor, you will follow his prescription. That's the reason we praise Almighty God and we worship him so that we can be good practicing human beings. You ask the question, why don't the animals worship him? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that in Islam, all the other creations, except for the human beings and the jinn, they have a free will. All the other creations, they don't have a free will. The angels don't have a free will. The animals don't have a free will. All of them, they worship Almighty God. The animals, the trees, the mountains, all of them, they worship Almighty God. They are called as Muslims in Arabic. The jinn and the human beings, Almighty God has given us a free will. We can either follow him or disobey him. Now, Almighty God created us because it's mentioned in the Quran that the best creation of Almighty God is the human being. Besides our form and our body and the intelligence, he has given us a free will. We can either obey him or disobey him. Now, after he's given us a free will, he wants to analyze whether do we obey him or not. All the other creatures like animals, trees, they have no free will. So it's nothing great that they worship Almighty God. It's good, Alhamdulillah. But after a free will has been given to the human beings, as the Quran says in Surah Mulk, chapter number 6 and verse number 2, Allah khalaqal mawata wal hayata. It's Allah who has given you death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. So this life is a test for us for the hereafter. So after the free will has been given to us, you can either worship Him or not worship Him. If you worship Him, then you're following the commandment of God. You can have alcohol, you cannot have alcohol. If you don't have alcohol, then you're following His commandment. So in this way, Almighty God has given you the do's and don'ts. Very few. The remaining thing, everything is optional on you. So these few do's and don'ts, if you take care of it, you are following the commandments, you're worshipping Him, and you will pass this test. This life is a test for the hereafter. Hope that answers the question, brother.